You're watching Fox Sports, home to the World Series, the BCS, the NFC Championship, the Daytona 500, and FoxSports.com. We are Fox Sports! Fox Sports welcomes you to live coverage of the 50th running of the Coca-Cola 600. Glad you're with us on this holiday weekend for a throwback Coca-Cola classic. We have an opportunity to spend Memorial Day with you and always to give thanks to the men and women who have served our country as Ryan Newman and Kyle Busch get ready to start from the front row. We appreciate the servicemen and servicewomen and their families. Joined by special guest B. Perez, Coca-Cola Senior Vice President and Coca-Cola Racing family member Kyle Petty. Welcome race fans. There's no better place to kick off summer than here at the historic 50th running of the Coca-Cola 600. It's the passion of the fans and competitive spirit of the drivers that make the Coca-Cola 600 a special family event. As we celebrate Memorial Day weekend, we would like to thank the men and women of our military for their service to our country. On behalf of the Coca-Cola Racing family, we welcome the night's Grand Marshal, Bobby Allison, a three-time winner of the Coca-Cola 600, who is representing all the legends who've taken the checkered flag at this race. So grab a nice cold Coca-Cola and join Bobby Allison for the most famous words in racing. Okay, everybody with me. Gentlemen, start your engines, all right. Bobby Allison, 83 NASCAR champ, excited to see the drivers of today. And with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers from Lowe's Motor Speedway at our Hollywood Hotel. And the gang is all here. We're glad you're with us uh, this holiday weekend. And Jeff, the setup uh, a little bit different. The rules have all been altered a little bit for these drivers and crews today. Well, it's because of the condition of the racetracks. Because NASCAR didn't let them make any changes during that uh, time it was back in the garage area. They had to leave the cars as they were just from last night. So they're going to be diff dealing with a different racetrack here today for sure. Tracks going to be a lot slicker, hard to get a hold of. It's still going to go through a lot of changes, but you really got to be on top of your adjustments. But there's a few guys, as far as I'm concerned, I think they kind of moved to the head of the class as far as being able to handle these kind of conditions. Guys like I, Ryan Newman, Kyle Busch, Tony Stewart. I even like, you know, Jimmy Johnson as far as this is concerned. This racetrack's going to be treacherous, and I think these guys can deal with it. Well, it'll be it'll be slick and greasy. Why those drivers, though? Is it the, the veteran, the experience? I just think they don't mind driving a race car that's kind of ill handling right now more than anything else, and that's the key, because these cars are not going to be very good to start with. They've got to work on them. We will have a mandatory caution flag at lap 40 if we don't have one sooner, but you don't get a chance to work on them until lap 40. Well, we still have rain in the forecast. It's a 600-mile race halfway to be official, so does that ever enter into the strategy? I think it does, Chris. I think you've got to look at it almost the two different you know, situations where you know it's not official until halfway. You've got to be up toward the front, so guys who are going to try to get track position, stay close to that front pack, you might say, or the lead as close as possible to allow it around 201, 202, so they know what's going on. And then you'll have an alternative plan, which means go the distance. Then you've got to race 600 miles. So we're going to see two interesting, I think, strategies come into play here. Uh, you mentioned the, I mentioned the front row. We have Jeff Gordon with his back pain. He gets another day. He still has to sit for a long time. And Mark Martin at age 50, who's won here four times. He already has two wins this year. Could be the oldest driver ever to win a Coca-Cola 600. Well, Mark, I think, has got a really good chance. But again, I'm not too sure that he's ready to handle one of these ill race cars. He knows what this racetrack's going to be like when they drop the green flag here. He's ready during the day. A lot of these guys maybe don't have as much experience with a daylight type scenario as Mark does, for example. So he may fare pretty well also. Maybe that's meant to be the high noon race, right? This hey, way. I love it because of the fact 50 years ago, Joe Lee Johnson had to do it this way. Daylight racing the way it's supposed to be. Hey, our man DW, he won all five of his races during the daylight hours. He knows what it's all about. And up to the play-by-play -play booth with Daryl Walter, Blair McReynolds, and Mike Joy. And good afternoon, gentlemen. Thanks, Chris, and hello, everybody. We're going to try to get 600 miles in today, of course. But the forecast for sunny weather is 60% from now until about 1 p.m. and 40% from then until, I don't know, Friday or so. 
Daryl, in the race car, does the possibility of this race not going the full distance affect the way you drive as we approach the midway point? Well, I don't know. Two things that pop out to me. You know, all we hear about is the testing policy. Uh, that it's, it's hurt the, the races. That these guys don't get a chance to go work on these cars. If that's the case, that they ought to be a barn burner. Because we've been over here for 10 days, and you've tried everything in the world, Larry, that, that you need to do to these cars. And my opinion about the 200, mile, 200 lap mark, you let that affect you when you get close to it, but you got to run your regular race until you get near that 200 lap mark, and right. then you may make a quick adjustment. And the thing about it, these guys, they have never had the same racetrack to deal with in two consecutive days because they've not been on the racetrack since Saturday, and they were fighting the weather on Saturday. The one good full practice they got was on Thursday when the sun was out and the track was hot. I think you're going to see a day of these guys, all 43 of them, chasing the racetrack, making adjustments constantly all day long. And I think you're going to see some desperation in the back of the field with people like Tony Stewart, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Burton, Matt Kenseth, because we know we're going to have somebody out there that's going to hit on it from the beginning, maybe too good at the beginning, and these guys are going to be back there fighting just to stay on the lead lap. Well, one thing we expected to do that we hope we won't do today is race from daylight into darkness. Let's have a look at the starting lineup for the 50th annual Coca-Cola 600. Ryan Newman, eight poles that leads all active drivers. At this racetrack, David Pearson won 14. Kyle Busch shares the front row with Flying Ryan. Teammates from Hendrick Motorsports, Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, and Jimmy Johnson all starting together with the Bud Man, Casey Kane, who knows his way to victory lane here, Daryl. Let's see if we can dial him up. Casey Kane, it's a DW in the Fox Sports booth. Buddy, you got a copy? Yeah, I got you, DW. All right, young man. Uh, how does uh, this race going off today at noon affect your strategy uh, based on what you had planned? Well, it's uh, still just as long, so we got to you know race the racetrack for a while here. I think the track will be a good bit different than what it's been in practice, probably. So just see where the car's at, make the right adjustments, uh, communicate well with Kenny, and I think if we do that kind of stuff, hopefully we'll be towards the front late in the race when we need the track position. Casey, will you push hard here at the beginning uh, because, uh, you know, there's rain in the area and uh, we could race maybe only to 200 laps. So we got, are you going to push pretty hard at the start? I think we'll definitely be looking, uh, you know, watching the weather and, and seeing where we're at come halfway. But these first uh, 50 laps here, I think, just see what the car is doing, make sure everything's under control, and, and then go for it, for it from there. All right, my friend. Have a great day in the old Bud car. And... Uh, We'll see you in Victory Circle. All right, thanks. Thanks, Daryl. Look back through uh, the back of the field. And starting last is Scott Riggs. Uh, word this weekend that he will leave Tommy Baldwin Racing after this race, kind of by mutual agreement. We'll see how Riggs fares today, starting from the back. Make it a great race day with the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager.